Welcome back to my channel. My name is Gareth James and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to set up your first sim in PyoSolver 2. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on the left hand side here, all of the information in these boxes that are at the moment, most of them are blank. Uh, you can see that I've already put in the two ranges that we're going to use. So let's start with the board then. If you know what the board is, you can put that in there. If you want to just run a random board, you can just click random right here. You can also just select the board like this so you could clear and you could go, okay, yeah, so ace, queen, jack, we want to run this one. You can also type in ac, qd, and, and jh for uh, ace, clubs, queen of diamonds, jack of hearts. Let's move on to the next bit then. So the starting pot. Today we're going to take a look at a 40 big blind pot. So uh, the starting pot then is going to be uh, 6.1 big blinds. So we're going to say that uh, the original razor opens to 2.3x and the big blind calls. So that's 4.6 big blinds already. And then we add in the big blind ante. So that's 5.6 big blinds and then the small blind as well. So that becomes 6.1 big blinds. And what I'd like to do is to just make that uh, 610 chips. So essentially what we're doing there is multiplying the pot size by 100. And then for the effective stack size, it's going to be 40 big blinds effective, but minus the 2.3 big blinds. So 37.7 big blinds. We're going to do that same calculation again. We're going to multiply it by 100. So we're going to enter in 3,770. Okay, so let's go on to bet sizes and raise sizes now. Uh, 40 big blinds, we could just go, okay, let's just do 25% and 75% pot. I think that would be absolutely fine. But one thing that I like to do instead of 75% pot is use this thing called 3E. Now, what 3E is, is three equal bet sizes such that, you know, whatever the, the geometric bet size is for the flop, you can also bet that size of the pot on the turn and on the river and you'd be all in on the river for the same amount of the pot. I think this is just a really, really nice feature of Pio to find that geometric bet size. Now, there is a chance that 3E is not going to be the right bet size for, for all situations. But I think that if you're looking for two bet sizes, then going for a small bet of, say, 25% pot, quarter pot, and then the geometric sizing is a really good place to start. When it comes to raise sizes, uh, I think that, you know, in position could potentially be smaller than out of position. So we could go something like 45% pot on all three streets. And if you're looking to add all ins, you can click uh, the add all in box as well. Uh, out of position, we do want to see if there are going to be any donk bets. Uh, so for certain boards, certainly not ace, queen, jack. But if we had other maybe low connected boards, we might see some leads from the big blind. Uh, we can add in an out of position bet size right here. I, I just like to have one bet size. I'm not sure that we are going to gain much EV by having two bet sizes from out of position. And to be honest, there aren't that many boards where we're going to see an out of position lead. So to be honest, if you want to speed up the simulation, the calculation time, then you could just get rid of this altogether. Okay, for raise size then, I'm going to go with 50% across all three streets. And I'm also going to check add all in two. All right, so bet size is on the turn. This is where I think it gets really, really interesting because again, you could go, okay, yeah, I want to have like small bet and big bet. And you could do the same for out of position, something like this. You have some donk sizes in there as well. But actually what I like to do is to just include the geometric bet size, just like this. And then I'll show you a little hack later on to show you what happens on various nodes of the game tree. Because you see, when I first started using Pyo, I would use like a small bet and a big bet on all, all streets. Uh, but the thing is that if you go small on the flop, then the size for the turn is going to be different from if you go big on the flop and then you know you might want to have small and big bets on the turn. So what happens is we can actually, there's a really nice feature within Pyo where you can set sort of dynamic uh, bet sizes. I'll show you more about that uh, in a little while. So we set this uh, on the turn and then on the river in position, I think that 50% is going to be the, the smallest bet size we want to use in position. There aren't many spots where we bet less than that. I have seen some like shallow stack um, blind versus blind in position where you might find a less than a half pot all in. You know, the shallower you are, maybe you do find like 40%, 45%, something like that. But certainly at 40 big blinds, I think we're going to be looking at 50% being the uh, the smallest bet size we want to use in position. Uh, out of position, definitely going to be using some block bets. Uh, but in position, we don't need to use a block bet because if we, if we don't think that our hand is worth 50% pot on the river, then we can just check back. Of course, out of position doesn't have that luxury. Let's also go with 90% and 225 on the river. And then for out of position, we're going to have some blocks. And we might say, okay, 25, 80, and 225. 
and then 33, 80, and 225 for the, for the donk sizes. Okay, so here's the hack then that I was talking about, and it's using this little button here called Preview Tree. If we scroll down a bit, uh, you can see it says Add and Remove Lines with Visual Editor. So what that does is it adds and removes lines right here, and it'll actually add the text in here. Now in PyoSolver 1, you had to do this manually, but the amazing thing in PyoSolver 2 is that you can actually add it in this funky little editor right here. All right, so let's take a look at different nodes or different branches of the game tree where we want to add some different bet sizes. So let me just go down the small bet first. So uh, big blind checks, we go small bet and our opponent calls. And on the turn, you can see that uh, out of position has this huge uh, lead now for about pot and, and can also go all in. So if we want to add a bet size here, we could say, okay, I want them to, to lead for, for quarter pot here as well. Um, then we can go for a check and we can see that imposition has the same thing going on. So maybe imposition is going to have, you know, this geometric bet size on the turn, which is pot, around pot, 99.3% pot. And then we're going to have something like a 40% bet as well. So we have a small bet and a big bet. Now let's go down the big bet on the flop. So you can see the geometric sizing here, 3E is 68.7% pot, big blind calls. And on the turn, you can now see the geometric sizing is 68.6%, as you would expect. But we might want to add a smaller bet size. So maybe we go for 25% again for the out of position player. And then once they check for the in position player, maybe we want to go something like 30 or 33% pot this time. And we can just add that right here. So I do think the, the best part of the new Pio is this uh, add extra lines, remove lines, sort of preview tree function where you can add different, different lines. I think it's really, really cool. And it is the turn where things get most interesting. Let's say we have a small bet on the flop and then we see a raise and we call. And on the turn, you can see now the geometric size is going to be this 55.6% pot. But let's say we want, okay, we want out of position to be able to bet small here, 20% pot and maybe in position, we wanna do the same, right? So we could have 20% pot for the in position player too. So if you're already thinking, okay, yeah, on the original line, we had uh, out of position uh, donking for 25% pot, why don't we just put 25 in here? Well, this is why, because if we did that, then we would have some 25% pots here and, and here. Now, for a better way to look at this, if we bet big and we see a raise and we call, on the turn, you can see the geometric sizing now is 33.9%. So if we have 33.9 and 25% uh, pot, they're both small bets. We don't need to have two small bets. The important thing when you're using solvers is that you actually have two distinct bet sizes or three distinct bet sizes, and you're not just going with you know a 25% pot and a 339 One of the biggest mistakes I see when people set up solvers for the first time and sometimes with uh, players who have been playing for a while, is they'll have like a 20% pot, a 30% pot, and a 70% pot. And that just doesn't make any sense. I remember when I first started running scripts and running uh, running sims, I set it up to have like 20, 30, 50, 70, and 100. And this is just really unnecessary. So don't, don't do that. Whilst the more bet sizes, the more options that you give the solver, you know, will give you a... a closer to GTO approximation, it's gonna be really impossible to be able to apply that in game. So what you're really looking to do is to say to the solver, okay, let's just give it two bet sizes and then we'll be able to see whether it bets small or bets big on, uh, on different boards. All right, so I've shown you how to use this visual editor. Make sure you hit save and close, otherwise these lines that we've just added will uh, you know, not be added down the bottom uh, where I showed you earlier with the add and remove lines. I guess before we do this, let's uh, let's say that we, we don't wanna have this geometric bet size. We just wanna do like 20% pot and jam. So we could add a new bet size here. And then with this bet size here, which is geometric, it says here that, look, that this bet size has been added by 2E. What we can do, we can click on it and then we click remove selected line and suddenly that line has been added here. So, you, I mean, you can imagine what it was like when I was doing this manually before. I was having to find out what the lines looked like and then add them and, and remove them. And that just took a really, really long time. So this uh, visual editor now is just superb and I absolutely love it. It's great. Okay, so I mentioned at the start that most of the boxes were blank and you can actually see some of the boxes already filled in here. So the all-in threshold then is currently set to 67% of the initial effective stack. I like to leave that, I don't ever really touch this. But the one that you might wanna to touch is this one here where it says add all-in only if less than, and at the moment it says 500% of the pot. So if we click on preview tree again, you can see that there's no option to go all-in 
in for either player on the flop. Now at 40 big blinds button versus big blind, it's unlikely that there are gonna be any jams here. But if we did want to allow an all in, because we do have it ticked here, add all in, then what we would do is we would just take this number here, 3770 and divide it by 610. Bring in the trusty calculator. So 3770 divided by 610, 6.18. So now if we added, let's say we go just a bit higher than that, 619% of the pot, then all of a sudden you can see when we click preview tree, we have now an all in option for out of position and the 33% which uh, is here. And then for in position now we have bet small, bet the geometric or bet big here, and then a jam. All right, so if we scroll down then, uh, I've never actually used this minimum bet size in chips, but I can see how useful it would be because you could just set this to 100 chips. Uh, to be the minimum bet, so it was one big blind, and uh, I think that's that would be quite useful. I think sometimes when you're running like blind versus blind spots, you might forget that you need to to make it a certain percentage of the pot so that the smallest bet is one big blind. And so let's say you went for 25% pot, that's going to be less than one big blind when you're when you're doing blind versus blind. So I think this can be a really useful feature, um, one that I haven't used, but I can definitely see how it'd be really really useful. Some of the other features then that you can see here, uh, we can do force out of position bet if we want to, or we can do force out of position check and in position bet. You can use this one if you believe that population is playing. Uh, you're very much like range betting a board, and so you can just do force out of position check and in position bet. So it'll just have in position betting 100% of their range. I don't tend to use either of these two anymore. I did definitely use this in the past, but now I just like to see what the uh, GTO solution is, is supposed to look like. And then when it comes to betting cap, what you can do if you don't believe that there could be any more than say four bets on the flop. Uh, so you see like a bet and a raise and, a, and another raise and then another raise. Like if you don't think that's happening and you want, and again, you want to speed up the calculation, then you can actually cap the number of bets to say three or four on the flop or three or four on the turn or three or four on the river. So the final bet is going to be all in rather than a, a smaller raise. If you are playing cash games, you can add rake here. Uh, it's not something that I tend to do. I'm a tournament poker player and tournament poker coach, so I don't tend to look at this, uh, but you can definitely add the rake as a percentage of the pot with a cap of a certain number of chips. And then something that I do use is this ICM function, and I'll just show you really quickly about this. Uh, you can put in the payouts all the way down to 18 places, and then you can also put in the in-position stack, the out-of-position stack, and then the remaining players in the tournament. If this is your first ever sim using PyoSolver, then you're probably not going to be looking at the ICM settings. So we're not going to spend too much time talking about those, but they are really, really useful when you're running some final table sims, for example. All right, so I'm looking down the rest of the tree and I think, yep, yeah, okay, I think we're pretty much done. The next step then, of course, is to build the tree. What you can do is estimate tree size just to make sure you've got enough memory on your computer to run the sim. Once you've clicked build tree, you're going to click go and the sim is going to run. The final thing I want to talk about here is the accuracy. The more accurate the sim, the better it's going to be. Sometimes I'll see players just put in, um, you know, one here. Uh, for 1% of the pot. I like 0.35%, but I do think that if you want it to be really, really accurate, really good, then 0.1 is going to be the place to go. If you check this box that says stop calculation if desired accuracy reached, then what will happen is it will run until it gets to this figure here or less than this, and then it will stop. So it's quite a nice feature. It means you don't have to just sit around and wait. You can go off and, and make a coffee or do whatever else you want to do. All right, so I think that is it. That is how to set up your first sim in PyoSolver 2. If you think I've missed anything, please drop a comment down below. I'm very happy to discuss the other features and go through those other features for you. Uh, if you want me to do a more in-depth video on any of the stuff that I've gone through today, then please let me know down below. And that's gonna be it. I'm gonna wrap things up there. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification as well. And until next time, guys, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.